Hello, I'm here with Jalem, who is from uh, Tigray, Ethiopia, Africa, and he has done a doctorate in my institute on uh, rainwater harvesting in a specific way, combining rainwater harvesting with agroforestry. And your doctorate was very successful, and now you're a prof at uh, Mekel University, and uh, maybe you say a few words about your project. Um, yeah, hello everyone. Uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, yeah, uh, my name is Alan Brand, and uh, I recently did my project, uh, my thesis project on rainwater harvesting in agroforestry system. And uh, yeah, uh, the results were uh, on on rainwater harvesting in agroforestry, uh, particularly in Eastern Tigray, and. Uh, this will be part of the continuation of uh, the, the thesis project, which is uh, because the results there were promising and there was uh, increasement in particularly in, in yield and uh, in, in preventing also crop failures. Mm -hmm. This will be the continuation mm -hmm. of the project. Yeah, from my work in Ethiopia, I've learned that many regions are drying out because the rains, when they fall, they are washing down the hills. And so uh, the idea here is to be capturing the water when it falls, to get it into the ground, also have some storage space. And um, now holding back the water is usually done with like building swales. It's a lot of earthworks. It's, it's expensive and tedious work in the heat. And uh, so the idea is to have agroforestry. So this is rows of uh, trees that are ideally also uh, food producing food and fodder, but also like timber or uh, producing firewood is absolutely great because uh, people in in uh, in the rural areas are very very poor usually, and everything helps. And so the idea is to to have the tree rows along the contour lines of the slopes so that the water can be held back by uh, by the trees. But let's get into the project a bit. So maybe you say a few words about uh, well what you have done. Yeah, um, thank you. The, the the project, the rainwater harvesting in agroforestry, is uh, actually uh, when we say rainwater harvesting, it's mainly for uh, um, agricultural rainwater harvesting because rainwater harvesting could be domestic rainwater harvesting so for many purposes so in this case it is particularly for uh, agricultural rainwater harvesting so that means uh, we have smallholder farming so when, during the smallholder farming the most uh, challenge for uh, smallholder farming is that they have uh, not enough rain and uh, also the soil is depleted also, these basically are the two main uh, challenges. So, what I came up with this uh, thesis, with the project was, we have uh, installed into rainwater harvesting on the upper slope. So, uh, particularly the technique is called stone bending. So, we uh, we uh, uh, constructed a pile of stones along the rainwater hub and along the contour lines. And we have a picture for that. Yeah. So let's go to this picture. Exactly. So what we hear is, as you can see, the upper part of the slope is uh, planted with uh, particularly the Euclidus uh, globulus, and which is uh, a main source of fodder uh, uh, and uh, for construction materials. So it's an uh, economic tree. And then uh, this Euclidus tree are going to arrest the, 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 the run of water. And in between, we uh, installed the stone benders and instrument with harvesting structures that are going to reduce the volume of runoff water. And on the lower part, we uh, planted the staple food crops of maize and barley. And these are the main uh, food uh, that are uh, common for in the community. Mm -hmm. So there are some more pictures here. So the idea is basically that we can also do this without uh, the stone bunding, that the trees, the rows of trees, tree clippings would also make water seep into the ground. But here you did the stone bunding also to hold back water. And this is on the next picture. 
Exactly. So here what we can see the, uh, the stone bending has a length of about 5 meter and to a height of up to 50 centimeters. So this is constructed at certain interval so that the one of volume will be reduced. And then we have here a spillway, as you can see, a spillway at the certain interval. So when the runoff is extremely high, so that the runoff, the, the water, the runoff water could be, uh, uh, in, could 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 flow mm -hmm. down the foot slope where mm -hmm. we have this rainwater harvesting pond. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So the rainwater harvesting pond. The idea for rainwater harvesting pond is actually to to bridge the dry spills because particularly in in in, in arid and semi-arid areas. Uh, the rainfall is not uh, uh, the pattern of rainfall is is fluctuating from time to time. So during the dry season, we have rainwater harvesting pond in order uh, to store excess runoff. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The the question of the spillways is very important because like the rains are often so heavy when it rains uh, that the water can destroy the structures. And we had that in one of our projects in uh, Aba Minj in the southwest of Ethiopia where some of our structures had been destroyed because we couldn't really construct a good spillway in that place. And uh, you also need to begin with the upper slope. So you, you start in the upper uh, reaches of the valley and then you work your way down because then you can sort of break the power of the water. So the water would already seep in, be hold back. And in addition to like having it seep into the ground, this ground is, is very shallow, so you constructed some ponds in addition. Exactly, yeah, uh, that's it. When we uh, uh, construct the stone benders at the upper slope, but actually it's not only stone benders, but we have seen earlier, we have also uh, eucalyptus trees. So the, the, the idea of for the trees is, of course, trees take up uh, part of the rainfall and also the woods of the trees will actually intercept the rainfall, somehow also reducing the volume of the yeah. runoff. Yeah. So, yeah, and uh, in this way, there will be actually a runoff water uh, that will still, uh, uh, which is excess runoff, and this will be concentrated on the foot slope. And then this rainwater harvesting pond is actually constructed on part of the, the, the on part of the land adjacent to the rainwater harvesting pond. We have this uh, the agroforestry where we planted uh, maize and uh, barley. So yeah, sometimes it is. Yeah, also a picture for that. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, soil amendment. You put some uh, organic matter in there to improve uh, fertility. Uh, but this is what I wanted to show here. This is the uh, yeah, maize and barley, so corn. And uh, this is also intercropping, so like also mixing different uh, crops so that they are helping each other. Exactly, yeah. Uh, when we have actually the idea of, of agroforestry is uh, the deliberate integration of trees and crops in the same land unit in order to basically diversify the farming products. Mm -hmm. But also not only from the economic point of view, but also it are essential for the ecosystem services because they are essential for the soil cell health mm -hmm. and also yeah for for the for storing. Uh, the, the carbon in the soil surface, especially when we are uh, incorporating also the soil amendment. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you also had the experience that in a time of, of trouble, like Tigray was in war for a long time, so it was really horrible. It was also strange that here in uh, Germany or in Europe nobody talked about it. It was not on the media at all, but a horrific war uh, on a huge population. And uh, maybe you tell me again what happened with the rainwater harvesting structure there, because it was a time of, of famine. And so how did people react to what you did? Yeah, uh, actually uh, the war started, the devastating war, so to say, started uh, two weeks after my arrival in, in, in Tigray. Uh, so nobody anticipated it, it was, was all unprecedented. So when we, uh, during the construction of the rainwater harvesting, once the, I started the project here, and uh, people were uh, a bit, uh, you know, were questioning in the beginning, but uh, there was all a complete shutdown. Mm -hmm. So nothing could be going in into the the region because it was completely blocked. 
and people start to see to come and to visit especially in mm. the neighboring areas and then mm. once they see that the this project is uh, bearing fruit especially when it turns green and then everybody uh, try to copy it actually yes, yeah. in almost uh, five or six households so yeah. to say and people were yeah uh, copying it and then yeah. applying it on their and yeah, yeah. And that's a measure for success. So projects that are copied by neighborhood uh, is successful. So and and that's uh, really great. And uh, like for those of you wondering why uh, eucalyptus, uh, it was nothing else that could be done here. And this was so helpful for people. And eucalyptus grows very fast. So if you need firewood uh, urgently, it's not such a bad tree and it will not be getting invasive because it's cut down all the time uh, but of course there are uh, the approaches that you will follow up now uh, when you are a professor at Meckler University uh, you will also include uh, food trees and of course the moringa the, the tree that could feed the world <laughs> probably <Yeah>. alone <laughs> and so that could be a lot more uh, diversity here and uh, yeah, finally, some final uh, thoughts. Uh, it is so much that can be done in uh, the areas of the world with uh, climate like subtropical climate with uh, plenty of sunshine. The water issue can be tackled. You have proven that. And so that's the key thing to, to, to start with, like uh, making the water cycle work on the local level. And uh, this will um, then also balance the climate because we will have cloud formation if it's done on a, on a larger scale. And with that, uh, the, the whole region can be reviving. And uh, that's the thing where I'm really grateful that you have uh, well done your research work uh, here in in Germany in Hamburg uh, but also in uh, Tigray and uh, that you can now teach and uh, so we want to make a project like this uh, near the university so we are planning together you have made first design and people who want to get involved, uh, make donations for this project, uh, feel free to uh, contact us uh, because this is uh, work that can help so many people out of poverty. So people could really thrive uh, if all these uh, dry regions are restored in this way hundreds of millions of people have a great future and they can develop very well and they don't need to migrate because that's something what is basically very often caused by the destruction of the land so if the land is restored then people can stay or also return and so that's the beauty of it that this is a win-win-win in so many aspects and so uh, yeah Final work for a word from your side, Jalem, Dr. Jalem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah. Actually, uh, thank you, Professor Temple, uh, especially uh, for for the support, especially during the tough times. Without your support, I wouldn't be able even to uh, to finish my studies uh, clearly. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, the project that we are starting now is called uh, it's a continuation of the research project, the thesis project, it's rainwater harvesting and agroforestry. And it is targeted towards improving smallholder farming and with a focus on soil and water aspects. So when we have the water and when we have the soil, so yeah, the life can be improved and the yield can, can be improved and which is also makes it easier to uh, diversify their income. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we are grateful for any uh, support, mm -hmm. financial support or any, any collaboration are mm -hmm. yeah, welcome. Yeah, and also please spread the word. So uh, Jalem has learned about these approaches in my classes, in my ne Nexus classes. And these Nexus classes are for free in this same channel. Just search for Nexus, N-E-X-U-S. Uh, and uh, so you can also follow these uh, lectures to learn more about these techniques. 
and uh, there are not that many universities that are teaching this and I'm glad that uh, Mackellar University will do more into this direction and so thank you very much for all your uh, persistence of your work and uh, yeah on further uh, collaboration and yeah. all the best and thank you for yeah. being here thank you yeah. bye Ciao.